Okay, today what I want to go through and do is talk about something called Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. And to illustrate this law, what I want to do is look at the moon and the earth and how they're attracted to each other through gravity. Uh, now, I, I fully understand this is clearly not to scale, uh, and actually the inclination of the Earth relative to the Moon is a bit off too, so, so don't be too harsh on that. But uh, we've just got these two objects in space, and I want to work out the magnitude of the force by gravity between these two objects. Now, Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation is given by the equation force by gravity is equal to Big G, this is the gravitational constant times the product of the two masses in question. So I'm gonna say big M and little m. Sometimes you'll see these written as M1 and M2, whatever floats your boat really, over radius squared. Now this word radius is a little bit misleading and we'll talk about that in a minute here. But this right here is what's called Newton's law of universal gravitation. And what this law describes is the gravitational force between any two objects anywhere in the universe, and it's a universal law. Now, when you get into really ridiculously crazy situations like black holes and, and really small situations as well, this breaks down a bit, but for, for most of the things that we deal with on a regular day, everyday basis, this is what we would consider to be a universal law. So let's talk about what exactly is going on here. This force by gravity. Uh, this is the force by gravity that we've talked about in the past when you know a block is sitting on the surface of the earth right here in Germany. Uh, it's, it's being pulled toward the center of the earth. That force by gravity is no different than what we've dealt with in the past. Now I know this equation is a little bit different and we'll talk about that in a bit. So we've got this weird capital G. This is not little g like 9.8 on the surface of the earth. This capital G is what we call the gravitational constant. This capital G, the gravitational constant is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th Newton meters squared over kilogram squared. And really all this gravitational constant tells us is actually how strong gravity is. Uh, when we look at the two masses and how far apart they are, this, this value right here is telling us how strong gravity is. And in reality, it's not very strong at all. This 10 to the minus 11th is actually telling us gravity is a pretty weak force. And it's, it's really hard to illustrate that until we start looking at things like Coulomb's law, dealing with charges which are near each other. That may be something you've seen in chemistry before. Um, compared to gravity, the force between charges or the electromagnetic force is, is absolutely enormous. But we'll, we'll save that issue for another day. Today, I just want to look at this law of universal gravitation and talk about how to apply this. So, in order to apply this law of universal gravitation, I want to look at the moon and the earth and the force between them. So, to do that, we're going to need to know a few things about the earth and the moon. And the first thing is the masses of each of these objects. Because here in the equation, we have the mass of one object times the mass of the other. Okay, so now we have the relevant information here. Uh, we've got the mass of the Earth, the mass of the Moon, and the distance between the Earth and the Moon. Now I know when we look at this equation here, we're looking at a gravitational constant, some masses in a radius. And this radius right here is actually a little bit misleading. Uh, people often want to say, okay, there's a radius, so don't we need the radius of the Earth? Nope. Don't we need the radius of the Moon? Nope. This radius and that, that term being in R is really misleading. Really what it should be is a distance. It is the distance from center to center between the two objects in question. And so what we have here is, is all the information that we will need in order to go through and solve for the force between the Earth and the Moon. Now I want you to realize this is a gravitational force and just like any other force, this still obeys Newton's first three laws. Uh, and most importantly, it's going to, in this case, obey the third law. And that is to say, for every action force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. And that is to say, if the Earth pulls on the Moon with some gravitational force, 
then the moon is going to pull on the earth in the opposite direction. And here's the kicker, with the same amount of force. It's a little bit non-intuitive. People want to think that because the Earth is so much more massive than the Moon, then the Earth must be pulling harder on the Moon than the Moon is pulling on the Earth. And that's that's just not true. Uh, this goes back to Newton's third law. If the Moon is pulling on the Earth, the Earth is pulling on the Moon the same amount and in the opposite direction. Now, the reason the Moon winds up orbiting the Earth uh, as opposed to the other way around is because the Moon is less massive. And really, if you want to get technical about this, uh, they're actually orbiting their mutual center of gravity, which sits right about here. But I, I don't want to get into center of gravity today. That's, that's not what we're talking about. So let's go through and find the magnitude of this force between the Earth and the Moon. So plugging in numbers to our equation here. The force by gravity is going to be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th. That is the gravitational constant multiplied by our first mass. Let's make the big M, the big M, the Earth. Uh, that's gonna be 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. I'll put these in parentheses, just keep it pretty. And then of course the mass of the moon. Uh, so we've got our, our numerator sorted out, and then we've got our radius term on the bottom here. And like I said before, we don't need to start thinking too hard about this. This is simply the center to center distance between these two objects. Okay, uh, We don't need to worry about the distance from the surface of the Earth to the surface of the Moon. That would be doing this incorrectly. Um, we're worried about center to center, which is 384 thousand kilometers. Now we need to be careful here. Anytime we're using this equation and dealing with the gravitational constant as it's shown here, we need to get everything converted into meters, kilograms, and, and newtons. Uh, so you'll see here, we've got our gravitational constant. This was in kilograms. This is in kilograms. But we need to get our radius or our distance in meters. So this is going to be 384, not thousand, but million I'll actually write it out, cute little commas, squared. So this is simply using Newton's law of universal gravitation and applying the different values of the these moon and the earth. And what we come up with is a force by gravity that is equal to 1.99 times 10 to the 20th Newtons. And, and that's an enormous force. It is enough to keep the moon in orbit around the Earth. Now, when we start talking about celestial objects, like the, the forces between the Earth and the sun, or between the moon and the Earth, this really isn't that, that crazy or ridiculous of a number. But yes, this is not something that we typically, as, as people, encounter for forces in our everyday lives. This would literally be crushing. Now, one thing I do want to address here is this force by gravity. You'll remember, we've dealt with gravity before, but we haven't talked about it using Newton's law of universal gravitation. We've always talked about the force by gravity as being mg, where g is the acceleration due to gravity. And we've always used this when we're talking about things being very close to the surface of the Earth. So let me show you where this really comes from using Newton's law of universal gravitation. So let's go ahead and rather than looking at the forces on the moon, between the Earth and the moon, let's imagine we're looking at something on the surface of the Earth here. So the force by gravity on the surface of the Earth, well, between any object, and, and we'll get to the object that we're going to deal with in a second here, and the Earth, we're going to have the gravitational constant that's 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th, multiplied by the mass of the Earth, because the, the Earth is one of the objects in question, times some other mass. And I want you to realize this, this mass could be any mass. We're just going to put some tiny little mass right there. Uh, we'll just say it has some mass m. I'm going to draw it over here for a reason that I hope you'll recognize in a second. 
And then we're going to divide this by the distance between the center of the Earth and our object right on the surface of the Earth. Now, I know it's tempting to say, oh, they're right next to each other. The distance is zero. But if you put a zero in right here, you are going to end the universe. We will have infinite forces and all will be lost. And I, I don't need that drama, okay? I've got weekend plans, so don't ruin the universe. Realize this radius right here, that is the center to center distance. So if I'm looking from the center of the earth to Germany, we're worried about center to center distance. So what we need here in this case is not the earth moon distance, we need the radius of the earth. And the radius of the earth is 6,380 kilometers, or in meters, 6,380,000 meters. I'm gonna square this. So, I don't care what the mass of our little object we're gonna put off in Germany here. I, I guess it's closer to t Turkey, maybe Kazakhstan. Um, somewhere over here this mass we're just gonna leave it as m but what i want to do is go through and look at this term right here if you punch this in your calculator guess what you're gonna get yes just just take a guess i think you already know or maybe you're guessing this term right here works out to be 9.8 or 9.81 um, and depending on exactly how particular you want to be about the mass of the Earth and exactly what you want to say the radius of the Earth is. Uh, it, the Earth is actually different in radius this way than it is that way. And that has to do with its spin, which we're, we're not getting into that today. So we're going to go with an average of 9.81 meters per second squared times m. Or if we rearrange this a little bit for us, we've got the force by gravity is mg, where g is the acceleration due to gravity. So I want you to realize, even in the past, if you've been dealing with a force by gravity problem where you were simply using mg, I you realize this, this g was simply coming out of Newton's law of universal gravitation. You're simply looking at all of this in this term right here, compressed down into one simple number. Now we're talking about where that number comes from. What's convenient about this is we could go through and do something like find the acceleration due to gravity on the moon. Simply by plugging in our values uh, for the radius of the moon and the mass of the moon into our force by gravity equation, we could come up with the acceleration due to gravity on the moon, or the sun, or Jupiter, or any of the planets, or really anything uh, that has mass. Now, the last thing I want to bring up here is the genius of Newton for coming up with this formula. Uh, part of what he did was he took a look at lots and lots of data which other astronomers had collected, and then he went through and mathematically was able to prove this uh, effectively by inventing calculus. Okay, so was, it, he did a lot of work to be able to do this. He did a huge amount of work to be able to say that we could approximate the entirety of the mass of a spherical object as being at its center. Uh, he effectively invented calculus or portions of calculus in order to prove that to his contemporaries. And so this is Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation, and that's all for now.